Of all treasures, gold is known to be the one sure commodity to keep its value away. It has only been appreciated recently, but is worth more when it has a bit of history. Even shipwrecked gold from the Spanish fleet is worth more than $30,000 because of its history. Join us as we delve into the prices of some of the biggest gold deals in pawn shops. A 1554 Spanish shipwreck pile of gold. A middle-aged American man approached a pawn shop owner looking to trade an unknown pile of gold left behind by his grandfather, an adventurer and lover of golden items. He initially wanted to trade the gold for just $4,000 in cash, but upon interaction with the expert, the shipwreck gold was sold for over $34,000. The pawn shop expert noted that the pile of gold was from the 1500s due to the markings and the engraved XX sign. The gold also carried the Spanish fleet sign, making it a gold bar. Gold in the 1500s was marked for 24 scale, and the 1554 Spanish shipwreck gold was marked for 20 carats. Before 1971, it was illegal to own gold in the United States of America. This period was known as the Great Depression. During this period, gold was prohibited by law under the Gold Confiscation Act. The act was enacted by the then President of the United States, President Franklin D. Roosevelt, and was intended to stop gold hoarding. However, many Americans saw this scheme as a scam because FDR ordered all private citizens, partnerships, associations, and corporations to turn in all their gold in exchange for $20.67 per ounce. The 1554 Spanish shipwreck was known as the San Esteban Ship Tragedy. San Esteban was a Spanish cargo ship wrecked in a storm in the Gulf of Mexico on the Padre Island National Seashore in southern Texas on April 29, 1554. The ship was a flotilla of four ships carrying treasure from Mexico, known as New Spain in 1554, to Cuba. Three were wrecked in the storm, including San Esteban. Many of the 300 sailors and passengers drowned while trying to reach shore. About 30 people took a boat to seek help. Almost all the others died of thirst or starvation or were killed by hostile local Karankawa Indians during their attempt to walk back to safety. The Spanish sent a salvage expedition but recovered less than half of the cargo and treasure. The famous Spanish San Esteban ships lost a lot of gold bars and treasure that were rediscovered in 1964. A private company, Platoro Limited, began to excavate the Espiritu Santo wreck in late 1967, which caused public outrage and the passage of new laws to protect wrecks on the Texan coast. The remains of San Esteban were found in 1970 and excavated in 1972 to 73. Many artifacts have been recovered and are held in the Corpus Christi Museum of Science and History. They include the world's oldest mariner's astrolabe with a confirmed date. Francisco del Huerto captained the San Esteban ship. The ship featured about 300 people, of whom perhaps 100 to 150 escaped drowning. Many women and children were among those who reached the shore. Captain Huerto was able to salvage a boat. He returned to Vera Cruz with 30 men to get help. The other survivors tried to walk south along the shore, not realizing that the nearest Spanish outpost was Tampico, 300 miles away. They met local people who seemed friendly and offered food, but later a fight broke out and the Karankawa Indians followed them, picking off stragglers with arrows. The actual worth of 1700 Spanish gold coin. Spain is one of the early progenitors of golden bars and coins. They made many coins as treasure circulated in the early days of civilization. Due to the scarcity of these coins, their prices have become inflated, and these golden treasures are now sold at high prices. Pawn shops are known buyers of treasures, but going to the shop without knowing the actual prices of these treasures can reduce the monetary value you could get from them. Such is the case of a young man who approached a pawn shop looking to sell a 1700 Spanish gold coin for just $2,000. After interacting with the pawn shop expert, the golden coin's actual worth was estimated at about $20,000 to $25,000. The pawn shop treasure expert noted that the coin was an eighth version of the Spanish Escudo coin, and it was minted in Lima, Peru, 
a pretty bad mining site due to the high degree of forced laborers and underpaid workers. When the Spanish occupied Latin and Central America, they used many enslaved people as workers in different mines on both continents. These arrangements profited the Spanish leaders due to the high value of gold in past years. Escudo, a Spanish word meaning shield, was a widely accepted mode of payment in the international community in the early 15th century. The gold coin was introduced in 1535 to 1537, with coins denominated in escudos issued until 1833. Gold coins were issued in different denominations, ranging from half to eight escudos. From 1809 to 1849, coins denominated in different values, ranging from 80 to 320 reales were issued equivalent in gold content and value to two to eight Escudo coins. Most were minted in Madrid, marked with an M engraving, while the Seville ones bore an S below and left of the Royal Coat of Arms. The one Escudo was introduced in 1864, followed by the other silver and gold coins in 1865, and the copper coins in 1866. The Spanish Escudo reigned supremely as the legal tender in all American and Caribbean states for over three centuries. The coin purchasing power was reduced when the United States of America, in 1857, discontinued using the coin as their preferred mode of payment for international transactions and commerce. After the fall of the Escudo, the Spanish government in 1864 tried to resuscitate the coin by introducing new silver coins with the same name and value, but soon abandoned it in 1870 and joined the Latin Monetary Union and introduced the Peseta. This ended the 300-year history of Escudo as an international legal tender. 1849, United States Liberty Head Double Eagle Gold Coin. A local bail U.S. bondsman, John, approached a pawn shop looking to trade a rare Liberty-struck U.S. gold coin created in the 18th century with high hopes of getting about $1,000 above to settle a $50,000 debt he owes after a guy bailed out on him. The United States gold expert explains that the United States started creating this coin in the 18th century, and different variants were created over 80 years. These variants were created with different designs, and the worth of these coins was engraved on the back of the coin. After the expert's intervention, John got a fair price of about $20,000 to $30,000 for the Liberty-struck U.S. 1849 gold coin. The United States Mint under United States Mint, Chief Engraver James B. Longacre, designed the smallest coin it has ever struck to this day, the $1 Liberty Head gold coin. A 13 millimeter, 1.672 gram regular issue gold coin was issued in three types throughout its 1849 to 1889 production period. The gold dollar was instituted just as the gold rush kicked off in California and gold became more readily available. The Liberty Head Double Eagle or Coronet Double Eagle is a $20 gold piece designed by the chief engraver of the Mint of the United States, James B. Longacre. It was first struck in 1849 as a pattern coin and was used for commerce from 1850 to 1907. Before the Liberty Head Double Eagle, the largest denomination of the United States coin was the Eagle, or $10 piece, authorized under the Mint Act of 1792. However, the discovery of gold in California in the 1840s caused Congress to consider new denominations of gold coinage, resulting in the gold dollar and double eagle. Longacre designed the Double Eagle after infighting at the Philadelphia Mint, and it began to be issued for commerce in 1850. The coin was immediately successful with merchants and banks trading it. It was struck until the St. Gaudens Double Eagle was replaced in 1907, and many were melted when President Franklin D. Roosevelt recalled gold coins from the public in 1933. Despite its success, only one 1849 Double Eagle is known to survive, and it rests in the National Numismatic Collection at the Smithsonian. Millions of Double Eagles were sent overseas in international transactions to be melted or placed in bank vaults throughout their run. Many have now been repatriated to feed the demand from collectors and those who desire to hold gold. The double eagle was a banker's coin intended to simplify transfers of large sums between financial institutions and between nations. The act authorizing the gold dollar and double eagle caused conflict at the Philadelphia Mint. 
The officers, including Chief Coiner Franklin Peel, were mostly friends and relatives of Director Patterson. Longacre needed more assistance and faced opposition from Peel. However, Longacre persisted and completed the dies for the Double Eagle. The obverse features a head of liberty in the Greco-Roman style, facing left with her hair pulled back in a bun. The reverse features a heraldic eagle holding a double ribbon on which E Pluribus Unum is inscribed. An 1809 $5 American gold coin. The United States of America's gold coins are among the rarest treasures in modern day history. The precision and materials used make them precious and extremely rare. A confident young man who loves coin collections approached a pawn shop looking to sell one 1809 $5 United States of America gold coin. According to him, only 25 pieces of this treasure are available on the open market, and he happens to be among the lucky owners of one. The handsome-looking young man noted that he started collecting valuable coins at the age of 10 years, and he has developed a bond with studying different collections of coins. He was looking to get a whooping sum of $31,510 for the coin to start a college trust fund for his kid. The Coinage Act of 1792 established the United States Mint and regulated the coins of the United States. The decree was passed by the United States Congress on April 2, 1792, to regulate the coinage of the United States. This act established the silver dollar as the unit of money in the United States, declared it lawful tender, and created a decimal system for U.S. currency. The original gold coinage included $10, $5, and $2.5 denominations, and was created to rival and break the economic dominance of the Spanish coin and silver. According to a pawn shop expert who was called to explain the monetary value and historical representation of the gold coin, the coin in the past was a powerful denomination and was equivalent to a week's payment for skilled laborers such as master carpenters, silversmiths, blacksmiths, etc. Viking Treasures It is only sometimes that someone walks into a pawn shop looking to trade a rare Viking item. Viking treasures have historical and cultural representation for Danes, Britons, and other parts of Europe that had Viking histories, and this fact has ensured that the Viking treasures are well cherished and very much sought after by treasure hunters around the world. A young man entered the pawn shop looking to sell Viking treasures consisting of bracelets, Viking swords, and other items for just $1,200. But upon interaction with an expert, the actual worth of these Viking treasures was well over $8,000 in cash. The Galloway Hoard is a hoard of over 100 gold, silver, glass, crystal, stone, and earthen objects that reigned throughout Europe and North America during the Viking Age. The hoard is currently held in the National Museum of Scotland and was discovered in the historical county of Kirkud Brightshire in Dumfries and Galloway in Scotland in September 2014. The treasure was discovered by a metal detector enthusiast on Church of Scotland land. Experts have described the hoard as one of the most significant Viking hoards ever found in Scotland. It is thought that the hoard was buried sometime in the mid 9th or 10th century. It is yet to be known why it was buried. Although many believe people of the old ways buried treasures to appease the god of Odin for power to win battles, it has little or no historical backing. The hoard consists of armbands, a Christian cross, brooches, ingots, glass beads, a golden case touchstone, and dirt balls containing flecks of golden bone, all in a silver vessel. These include Britain and Ireland's largest and most varied collection of Viking Age gold objects. Gold Lebrace Medallion Celebrity items are known to be very costly and of great value to their fans or followers. Men like Wladzio Valentino Liberace are known to command great respect among music lovers worldwide. Whether you were around during Liberace's reign as a musical icon or not, you would have surely encountered different documentaries of Liberace as a musical legend. A young man entered a pawn shop, hoping to sell a golden medallion popularly worn by Liberace during his lifetime as a musical icon. The young man hoped to get $25,000 for the medal, but the pawn shop owner would not pay more than $13,000. The Liberace medallion was made of iced silver and coated with gold. 
The inside featured spaces where other interesting items could be stored. In the front of the medallion was an engraving of the popular face of the woman used in the Liberty photos. Wolodziu Valentino Liberace was born May 16, 1919, in Wisconsin, to parents of Italian and Polish origin. He built his career as a pianist and enjoyed a career spanning four decades of concerts, recordings, television, motion pictures, and endorsements. He was very popular from the 1950s to the 1970s and was the highest paid entertainer in the world during this period. Liberace lived a lifestyle of flamboyant excess on and off stage. He was a well-known spender during his day, which accounts for why so much of his jewelry is on auction sites today. The Liberace Show was one of the most visited musical concerts in history. Liberace was a well-known performer who toured the world with his music. He had his first international engagement, playing successfully in Havana, Cuba. He followed up with a European tour later that year. Always a devout Catholic, Liberace considered his meeting with Pope Pius XII the highlight of his life. In 1960, Liberace performed at the London Palladium with Nat King Cole and Sammy Davis Jr. Despite successful European tours, his career had slumped since 1957, but Liberace built it back up by appealing directly to his fan base. Through live appearances in small town supper clubs and television and promotional appearances, he regained popularity. I hope by now you know the actual worth and the historical representation of some of these ancient items. Like this video and subscribe to join us for the next episodes as we walk you through the monetary value of other archaeological items and their historical representation.